Hi, this is Gamma. The title of this video is Czerny rebukes that Czerny was a double beat person, double beat theorist. What I want to do in this video is show you hard facts. I will not talk about who I am, what I study, what I do or whatever. I will just show you the original text from Czerny where it is about from Gebrauchtes Melzen, uh, Melzerschen Metronoms here. What I just will say is that I'm German. I can understand this text. In fact, I read this whole book and to get, and the language is very similar to how we talk today. It's very understandable. There are some old words, but it's a very clear, very clear text and a proof that Czerny wrote in single beat at least at that time when he wrote this book. I will not say that maybe he wrote pieces for double beat. I don't know, but I will say that Everything in this book here makes sense to be understood as single beat. So let's start. Here he explains how the Melzerische Metronom works. And let's now jump here down to um, this text here when he says, so if we have crotch at 112, so rückt man das Metallene an der Vordern mit Einschnitten versehenen Stange, angebrachte Dreieck, genau auf jenen Einschnitt, der mit der rückwärts befindlichen Zahl 112 in einer Linie steht, lässt die Stange freischlagen und spielt jede Viertelnote genau nach den hörbaren Schlägen des Metronoms. So you can check that out on imslp.org. There is a English version and I will do a translation on my own. And I honestly don't care if you think that I make mistakes because I'm German. I was born in Germany. And I can translate that very nicely. And what this says is that if it's 112, then you want to let this rod uh, move. And then you play every quarter note according to the hits. Here is a plural to the hits you hear from the metronome. So I saw this video from this one channel, which probably everybody knows, which proposes double beat theory. And then it was said, oh, here is a plural. So this means that two hits are one, you know, um, are one, 112 to be understand. So, so you have it. But, and then it was said, okay, it doesn't make sense grammatically if it, it, if it really means that this is like, you know, a plural thing where it's a general construction and you actually meant to each schlag, to each hit. Well, okay. I mean, that's not 100% clear. We cannot say for sure what the truth is. So let's go on. Let's go on. That's what didn't happen in this video. In this video here, it was over. But what I want to do now is present you hard facts. <laughs> and this gets me real worked up because people believe in snippets from, from in excerpts. I want to now show you a big chunk of this, of this paper here. Yeah? So we go on now. And here we have a big list, in fact, um, eight different examples of, of speeds. And what I want to do now is play all of them. I, want, I will play now all of them. So if you know my channel, you know I'm, 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 I'm a mathematician. I'm not a, a professional musician. I'm an amateur. I, you probably don't believe me, but I, I think that I cannot play really super well i'm just you know it, it makes fun and piano playing is just fun for me okay so and i didn't study any of that i i didn't sit down like two hours for this video i just looked at that and tried everything one time and now i want to show you how the sounds when i play it at the speed written here because here we have examples for metronome markings these are literally chinese examples for different metronome markings and here we start now with the first one, which is set, which is Allegro Vivace, 160. And of course, I will use the interpretation that one quarter note is 160 as it is written here. OK, so I will put now here my program to 160, which gives me a metronome speed. And then I want to play this first uh, snippet here. So that's here, the text. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> It's pretty quick. A 
that's pretty quick, but it's Allegro Vivace. It's Allegro and even a bit more, okay? So this is uh, Allegro Vivace. It's perfectly playable, it's no problem at all. Good, so let's go to the second one. This is Molto Allegro. This is now really quick, so this is 100 per half note. Let's hear the, te the tempo. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Okay, this is also very quick. This is really fast, but this is molto allegro. This is even quicker than the first one, and it's still perfectly playable. It's no problem at all. Maybe we don't like it. Maybe we think it sounds stupid. Maybe we think it doesn't sound good, but it's playable. It represents a molto allegro. That's all I want to say here. And even if you say, oh, this is that doesn't make sense, I'm literally just playing what's written here. Okay, that's what I'm doing right now. So let's go now to C. This is Presto 144. Oh, this must be probably unplayable, right? This must be now only uh, possible in, when we have the tempo. So let's see what 144 is. Bum, 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 bum. Again. It's quick, but it's presto, and presto means quick, okay? So this is a fast passage, but it's playable. Now let's go to the next one, which is Allegro Tempo di Valze, 88. Let's put it here to 88 or 87, whatever. This is now dotted half note, dotted half note for 88. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Would say a nice waltz tempo. This is 88, and here we have from Bach Scholar. We saw the videos where we have big problems to have that. Is it treble beat? Is it playing two against three? What is it? It doesn't make sense here. But anyways, if you just play it like it's written here, like everybody understands it, it makes sense. Okay, now let's go to the Andante. This is an interesting one. This is 76 per um, quarter note. So this is this tempo. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Honestly, that's a bit slow. That's almost a bit too slow in the single beat. But anyways, that's Andante. That's a nice, you know, like somebody going. My piano teacher used to say Andante is when you can go to it. Okay, and here you can even go to it. It's perfectly an andante. It's a perfect andante. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Adagio is 92 for eight, per eighth note. Let's listen to that. Bum, 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 bum. Perfect. It sounds very nice. It's like Beethoven. It's a slow movement. That's an adagio. So let's go to the next one. Here I honestly cannot really read this number. It seems like <laughs> it seems like a mixture, be mixture between a three and a five. So whatever, I take the 132 here, which is the slower one because probably both will be very quick. I mean, it's presto. And so let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, again. Playable. I think even in 152 it's playable. But um, we have something which is even quicker, so whatever. Let's jump to the last one, which is Plastissimo. And by the way, Chani explains what Plastissimo means because people refuted my definition. My definition was, as I knew, it's as fast as possible. Czerny literally writes, plastissimo means as fast as possible. So that's what Czerny understood for plastissimo. Now let's sound what plastissimo sounds like for Czerny. 
Bam, 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 bam. It's difficult, it's very fast, but it's as fast as possible. And honestly, I cannot play it quicker. So it's perfect. It really makes sense. This is a plastissimo. For me personally, that's the fastest I can play. I am not Yu Jo Wang, I'm not Valentina Lisitzer, I'm not whatever. I'm just some amateur who sees studies, etudes, etudes where you have to study them to, to be able to play them at high speed, where you don't just sit down and play everything at first sight. At half speed, I can play everything what Chani ever wrote at half speed. If you play it at full speed, you have to practice. You have to get the veloc velocity and you have to get the, um, the, the, the you know, capability to play it like that. So, but now to the best part of this video. Let's hear Chani rebuke that Chani used um, double beat. We have a text here which says, man sieht, dass auf diese Weise alle möglichen Gattungen des Tempo angezeigt werden können. So ist zum Beispiel bei D das angezeigte Tempo 88 für die äh, punktierte Halbe. Folglich dauert ein ganzer Takt nur einen Schlag des Metronoms. Und dieses ist das wahre, jetzt gebräuchliche Tempo für Walzer. So what this means, I will now make a translation. As I said, you can look it up on the translated version I'm SLP, but I will do a literal translation, okay, what this says. So As you see, yeah, you can get any uh, any kind of tempo for any genre or a gattung, and I don't know how you can translate that. That's like 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 it attitudes, nocturnes, or whatever. Everything which exists in the music. Yeah, you can get everything by different tempi, or you can indicate them by different tempi. So in D, for example, the written tempo is dotted half note eighty eight. This means that one measure lasts one hit of the metronome. And that's the true now used tempo for a waltz. Did you get that? In D, D is the waltz example, which was this problematic one, the problematic one where a dot and half note is 88. The whole measure is 88 when we understand it normally, like normal people, okay? 88 for this measure is when we just look at it. Now, Chani apparently was, had your prophecy and knew that <laughs> this whole issue would come up, this, this crazy issue. And so what he says here, okay, hey, you know what? Look at the, the tempo written there. It's dotted half note 88. So one measure less one hit of the metronome. Do you notice something? Einen Schlag. This is a singular. This is one noise. Schlag is hit is like, A noise. You cannot you cannot inter interpret this any way else in some in any other way. It's impossible. It's it, one hit ein Schlag is the noise the metronome uh, does. It's it's like hitting somebody. You know, like the noise. This is der Schlag here. So ein ganzer Tag dauert nur ein Schlag des Metronoms. And this here right here shows that one measure. Yeah, one measure is one hit of the metronome. There is, there is absolutely, absolutely no possibility. There is no way to misinterpret this, to get this wrong, to, to make a theory out of this. This here, do you hear me? This here right here shows in this whole Opus 500 that there is no chance, except Jenny at some point, maybe I overread it, would write, hey, you know what? We use double beat here or whatever. There is no way how you... Uh, look at it to inter interpret this in any other way because if we are a normal person and look at this then we say and if we don't know that there are in so to speak yeah uh, not playable speeds or whatever then we see this ah, okay 88 is one measure yeah uh, three over four so dotted dotted half note is 88 so one one you know one measure is 88 okay so i want to play one measure 88 this is one hit in my metronome Okay, this is what is written here by Chani to explain it for us. Chani says here, hey, 88 is a dotted half note, and this is one hit of the metronome. Now, the whole video I saw from this channel was about, oh, it's Schläge, it's a plural here, so we cannot say anything. Here, let's see where it was. 
112 per Quarter Nord. Man lässt die Stange freischlagen und spielt jede Feldnote genau dann hört man Schlägen. Uh, that's a plural, so it's two, right? That's impossible to, um, to see a single beat because the grammar is wrong here. But if you look at this one here, if you go a bit down, what's not happening in this video, which is like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes long. The videos are 20 minutes long and you don't go down and play actually what's written here, okay? If you play that, then you see that one measure is one hit of the metronome. There is absolutely no way, you, you, you must be like the devil, yeah? You must say like sweet is sour or, or that, that, that positive is negative to interpret this wrong, okay? So this here shows um, that he, he used a single beat, so to speak, used a normal, I want to say, way of interpreting this passage here. And now to end this video, I want to look at another um, little passage here. And he says what an allegro can mean, by the way. It can be calm, sweet. It can be like here, are pro probably all possible adjectives you can think of. Yeah? Allegro is a very... A very diverse and very um, general concept of playing a piece, and that's very interesting. The Charlie also realized that and, 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 and explains that, and so on and so forth. But I, what I want to point out now is, and because I cannot really show this here, um, I try to get it on the top of the page what I'm reading now, um, which starts exactly here. You see my, my cursor is here at the left, that top here, next, this one. This sentence here, I want to read the sentence. Next im reinen Vortrag ist nichts wichtiger als die richtige Wahl des Tempo. Die Wirkung des schönsten Tonstückes ja, wird gestört, ja ganz vernichtet, wenn man es entweder übereilt oder was noch schlimmer ist, allzu schleppend ausführt. Okay? Und er go on a bit. Im ersten Falle kann der Zuhörer, besonders wenn er es zum ersten Male hört, dasselbe nicht klar auffassen. Und im zweiten Fall muss es ihn notwendigerweise langweilen. So what this means here, I want to translate this now. He says, apart from the pure performance, you know, like just the general performance, the pure performance, nothing is more important than the right choice of tempo. That's what, and I think we know that Czerny put emphasis on that and everybody agrees on whatever. Okay. So he says it's very important to choose the right tempo, the right tempo. There is a right tempo, okay? There is a false tempo and there is a right tempo. And Chen explains what happens if you choose a false tempo here. He literally explains what it means to choose a false tempo. He says, die Wirkung des schönsten Tons, so the, the, the effect, yeah, the effect of the nicest uh, uh, piece of composition of uh, music will be disturbed, distorted, or even completely destroyed. Did you get that? It will be completely destroyed. If you either uh, play it too fast, über Eilen, Eilen is to be quick, and über Eilen is to be too quick, okay? If, if you're too quick, or what's even worse, what's even worse than that, if you play it allzu schleppend, it's a bit old-fashioned word, this means if you play just too dragon, too slow, so what Jenny is saying in this sentence, hey, you know what? Tempo is very important, the right choice of the tempo. Because if you play too fast, uh, if, you, if, you choose the, sorry, if you choose the wrong tempo, you can destroy the meaning of a piece. Think about that. You can destroy the meaning of a piece. You have like, a, like, like, like 100 pages of music and you destroy it by choosing the right tempo. That's crazy to think about it. A composer spends one year writing something and you destroy it, okay? So if you play too quick, or if you play it, and that's even worse, Chani, that's what Chani says. Chani says here that it's even worse to play it too slow, okay? Because if you play too quick, what happens to the listener? It's about the listener in the end, right? You play in front of listeners, and then what happens? So if he hears it to the, for the first time, er kann es dasselbe nicht klar auffassen, okay? If it's too quick, and what happens, I mean, if you are, are some, 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 some kid, yeah, what happens if you play something too quick? Everybody will say, it's, I cannot comprehend it. There's too many notes, there's too many to a wash of noise and whatever, okay? That's what Jenny says here. It's uh, dasselbe nicht klar. It's not clear. It's, it's, it's uh, I'm confused. I, it's like in this channel, I hear the, the revolutionary attitude version in, 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 in double beat. And it's like... Um, And 
and it's like oh we have to play double b because then the 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 the, the syncopations and uh, the accents are really hearable because if you play it normal then then uh, every you cannot understand anything right <laughs> So that's the interp uh, interpre interpretation here. And uh, then if we go on here, and you know, so this is now the, the next sentence. Uh, sorry, where was I? Okay, so if it's too quick, then we cannot understand anything. That's what Chen says. But if we are too slow, and now that's funny, because you know what? For Chani, it's so bad. It's so wor the worst thing you can do. He says it's it's even, even even more fatal and even worse, and it destroys, ganz vernichtet. The word is written here. Do you see that word, vernichtet? It's to completely destroy something to the ground. And he says it's even worse if you play too slow. What happens then? And for that, Czerny has nothing, Czerny has nothing left than pure sarcasm because it's so bad. What he says is, you know what happens when you play too slow? In the second case, it has to just bore him to death. It's just boring to the listener. Do you hear me? That's what Czerny says. He says, in the second case, muss es ihn notwendigerweise langweilen. It's like a, it's like a physical law that, it, that the listener is, is, is um, bored to death. That's what Czerny says here. Okay. So, and then he, may, he goes on about that with, if you have a piece which is 10 minutes and then... Uh, and then you played 15 minutes, well, it will be too long. It's, uh, es wird folglich viel zu lang. That's not difficult to understand, okay? So if you have 10 minutes and you play 15, if everybody plays 10, höchstens 10 Minuten, and when dieses Tonstück vom Spieler nun ein Drittel langsam vorgetragen wird, a third uh, part uh, um, uh, slower, then you have 15 minutes. Of course, this is einfach viel zu lang, right? it's a lot too slow. But this happens a lot with um, um, brilliant uh, publicly uh, played compositions when you play them um, in, in this fashion, even if you played them brav, brav is not brave, <laughs> it's a false friend, brav means um, you're, uh, brav is just somebody who's very, who sits down when everybody eats and, and knows what to do and what to talk and is just a brave, a brave kind, you know, like a, a good child, just a good child. So that's how you can think about it. Uh, but ihre Wirkung völlig verfehlen, you are completely beneath the point. Yeah, you don't get it. You absolutely don't get it. That's what Jenny says here. Okay. Listen what Jenny says. Wer noch nicht imstande ist, ein solches Tonstück im gehörigen Zeitmaße vor Zuhörern vorzutragen, der soll anstatt demselben ein leichteres wählen. Do you know what this means? This says, hey, if you are not able to play a composition in the right tempo in front of other people on YouTube, okay? If you're not able to do that, then choose an easier one. That's what Chani says here. If you are not able to play it in the right tempo, which I explained before, then you have to choose an easier piece. And that's not bad. He, Chani doesn't write, you're a complete idiot or you are, you're so bad. He just says, "Hey, don't don't make don't bore us with our with your with your playing." That's literally what Jenny says here. I mean, how this is so clear. It's it's so crystal clear. Jenny writes here that if the people like 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 little children or something, you know, they play it super slow, but they are very brave. They are very nicely dressed, and they 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 bow down, and it's very nice. But if, it, if they take 15 minutes, then it's too slow. Then the effect is gone. Ihre Wirkung völlig verfehlen. It's not only Wirkung verfehlen, not only the effect is gone, it's completely gone, okay? There is nothing left. That's what he says here. So, And um, the quicker a composition to be, is to be played, the more the player has to uh, play nice and easy, leicht, can also be translated like, you know, like... Um, just a light touch. Um, durch mühelose Überwindung der Schwierigkeiten und durch zarte und deutliche Geläufigkeit verständlich zu machen suchen, was immer möglich ist, wenn seine Fertigkeit hinreichend ausgebildet ist und das Tonstück gehörig eingeübt worden ist. So what this means is, 
But this means is if if you want to play a quick piece like the Prestissimo we saw before, how do you do that? Well, of course, you have to, to practice a lot. But what he says here is you have to have a beautiful touch, a beautiful, you have to play it beautifully and you have to have a light, light touch, leichter Vortrag. It's a general thing. It's like just a light performance. It's, like, it's, very, it's a light performance, whatever this means. To really to go over this the difficulties, yeah, what she says here, and by a delicate and a clear Geläufigkeit, like school of velocity, yeah, is Schule der Geläufigkeit, yeah, the velocity here. Um, you have to to make understand the people who listen to you uh, that your Fertigkeit is ausreichend ausgebildet, so that your uh, the capability as a player is. Um, good enough to be able to play it and then of course he says it uh, he says it here that you have practiced it enough i mean that's pretty clear no, of course so that's the last point here because it's so clear and then the last point i want to make i think this should have been the last point but um i saw something else which i want to close this uh, video on and the the last thing is he talks about difficulties when playing when, when playing difficult pieces isn't that interesting? Jenny talks about playing difficult pieces. Like we say, hey, oh, Jenny has, he wrote 1,000 million pieces which are too, which nobody can play on single beat because it's impossible to play and it sounds shit and blah, blah, blah. So, okay, let's see what Jenny says about playing difficult compositions here, okay? Schwierigkeiten sind nicht der Zweck der Kunst, sondern nur ein Mittel, aber ein notwendiges Mittel. Okay, so, so difficulties are not the um, like aim of art. Or the, the main aim, but they are just a middle, a device. They're a, a way, basically. Okay, but they're a necessary way, is what he says here. And blah blah blah. And then he goes on and on. Very interesting. So, but I don't I have no time now to read everything. But what he says, there is one Hauptregel. And I read this whole book, and he has some Hauptregeln, which he prints big. So these are now rules which are very important. Yeah, these are now the main rules, the main important rules. Listen to this main important rule from Czerny. This here, where, where my mouse is. Do you see that on the top? Jede Schwierigkeit klingt erst dann schön, wenn sie für den Spieler keine Schwierigkeit mehr ist. Czerny says here, every difficulty will start to sound nice at that point when it is no difficulty anymore for the player. Okay? So that's one of the key aspects which a lot of people miss, I think, when you have a slow performance and then you speed it up. Because when you have a slow performance and speed it up, it is not the same as interpreting a difficult work according to this whole big paragraph here written by Chan himself. If you read this, you will realize that there is more to it than pure speed, okay? There is more to it than pure speed. There is this thing that you, it will sound nice. It will make sense. That's what he says. His tempi are very high. Okay. They are high. They are difficult to play. But they will make sense to the listener at that point when it is no difficulty anymore for the player. You know, if I'm, if I'm like a crazy... Uh, and I play like a crazy madman... It will not sound difficult anymore. It will sound nice for the listener when it's no difficulty, you know, when people are just sitting down and, uh, and they, they just play that stuff, okay? Then it will sound nice. But when you play it like that, by the way, did you notice the accents? Oh, finally, I could hear the accents now. No. This was really very important to do it that way. If you play it like that and speed it up, you get a MIDI recording. And that's what Chani, at another point, I read the whole book, at another point he says, and it's a bit funny, if you have no dynamics, uh, like if you don't have any piano and forte, hypothetically, then you would have a recording which sounds so terrible because it sounds like a machine and whatever. I mean, he, there were no computers back then. There were no MIDI recordings, but MIDI recordings are exactly that, okay? So you can have a recording with no dynamic differences. And that's what he says is ugly. What he says is ugly when you play like a fortissimo, you couldn't hear this probably right, in such a way that it's the piano shouting and the piano is like, 
is, is, um, is making noise, is what he says. That's ugly. He says, even in the loudest fortissimo, you don't want to do that. And probably that's why people then uh, took the three, for the, the, the molto fortissimo, whatever it's called, fortissimo or whatever, you know, like the three Fs, which is um, surpassing that. But he says, never do that. Even in pianissimo, if you play the, 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 the quietest pianissimo, you should never play it so quiet that we cannot understand what you're doing. So no, there is no impressionism here, okay? That's another time. But if you play something very slow and then speed it up, you jumble around and, and destroy a lot of parameters which make up the music to hurt this rule. And then it sounds, and then, then it sounds ridiculous, okay? And then, and then people even go crazier with that. And that's now really the last point I want to make. They take a recording where you have, like, I don't know, like Opus 299 first piece, which is in C major. I don't know the piece, but it's something like... Something like that, okay, you know? And then you have a super high tempo, okay, whatever. It's a very high tempo, and um, even Lang Lang didn't play it, okay. That's uh, something where one has to investigate what's happening there. Okay, I'm talking about Opus 500 here. I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about Chani in this book. But now you say, hey, if I calculate that out, it's like 60 notes per second. It's 60 notes per second to be played. And then you have another piece, yeah? And then you uh, take, for example, the de la, uh, Elie de la Borde, which is on both hands. And then you say, oh, he demands in this piece even 23 notes per second or whatever. And then you take the, chan the, the Chani piece and speed it up on the computer to have the same number of notes. Okay, let me start now with a metaphor. If I say to you, this sauce is very hot, and, and I say to you, it has 300,000 Scoville. Scoville is the measurement. How hot will it be? Well, you know what? It depends on how much of that stuff is in there. If it's only one drop in the whole big, you know, uh, chili con carne, then it will be not very hot. But if, it, if there is one liter of it, uh, of it in it, then that's bad. And that's because Scoville is a measurement, an old measurement, as far as I know, how many drops of, uh, um, of water you need to neutralize one drop of that stuff, okay? So you're completely missing the point of a quantity. Now, if you say, oh, I can play 60 notes, but do you know what? I can play, I will now play to you 70 notes per second. 70 notes per, not 17, 70. Listen to that. Okay, I pushed my forearms on the piano. It sounded very bad, it was very ugly but I played 70 notes per second, or maybe more. I don't know how much. I can. I, I could probably play 200 or so, okay, or, or 300 notes per second. So I hope you get my point. If you have a melody in the right hand, which is unisono, which is only, only the right hand alone, how can you even compare that number, yeah, the, the, the notes per second, to something where I play this? Where in the left hand I have chords, now, if I play chords like that, I hope you see immediately that I can play a lot of notes per second, like probably 50 or 40 or something like that. Okay, now I make this recording here or whatever. And then I say, hey, here with the written tempo, it is 40 notes per second. Listen to how the Chani P sound speed up uh, sped up at uh, to 40 notes a second and then you get like okay so do, do you see the, the the point i'm making here it's not possible to always speed up performances to some number yeah because you have to see the context of the piece and the figurations which are also there because if i have clusters or if i have something else clusters is an extreme example i just want to make a point here but um, you have to see that to understand that you cannot just speed up a performance, okay? Now, to sum up this video, we saw that um, this is known, this is very known, that Chani talks about the metronome here, but he also talks about um, how to use it, and there is a bit of ambiguity here, but then he has a lot of examples, which I played all, I played all examples today, okay? I played them exactly at the speed, we realized that they are all perfectly fitting, Maybe we don't like it. Maybe we say, wow, the Adagio sounded so Beethoven. I had tears in my eyes. 
but the Volta Allegro, that was crazy, that was nonsense. But you know what, I don't care. In the end, it's it's not important if you think it's right or wrong. It's what Chani writes here, and he's not a god, and I absolutely believe that he's, he's a human being and there are errors and so on. But if we take this page here, if we take what we see here, then we get a feeling for what Chani thought. Okay, oh, let's put it this way. So you know what I'm doing now. I take the adagio and I make I make my double beat. Hey, it's double beat actually. I was wrong all the time, by the way. So this is double beat. Okay, this is not difficult for me. <laughs> well, let's see. Bum bum bum. Was noch schlimmer ist, allzu schleppend ausführt. Do you know what happened right now? Chani stood up and said, this is boring me to death. Chani just stood up and said, this is boring me to death. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. See you.